Infrared radiation is something special. We cannot see it, but we can feel it, and we can make pictures with it. Like these spectacular images of the Hubble Space Telescope on the right in infrared, which shows many more stars as compared to the visible radiation used on the left side. These are the famous examples of the Pillars of Creation in the Eagle Nebula. Although we would not reach that level of resolution in astrophotography, can we produce images in infrared and specifically for this object? So welcome to this presentation. Let's find out. Up front, we will need to realize that we will be restricted to the near infrared part of the spectrum since there is no widely available technology for mid and long range infrared or thermal radiation imaging, which is additionally challenged by atmospheric effects. For the near infrared imaging, or NIR for short, I will discuss my camera, filter, and telescope setup. And I will touch on the image processing part as we try to integrate another channel into our workflow. Okay, let's start with the setup. The most important part is, of course, the sensor. I'm using the ZWO ASI 585 monochrome cooled camera with a pixel size of 2.9 micrometer. The quantum efficiency is shown in the graph reaching down to 1000 nanometers. Color cameras typically have an UV IR cut filter preventing near imaging. There are similar camera models from other vendors which could be used, and I'm providing links to more extensive reviews of this particular camera in my description. I tested two near filters, one from Bada Planetarium and one from Optolon. Both have a very similar characteristic passing infrared light from 685 nanometers upwards. I'm using the Sharpstar 150mm hyperbolic Newton astrograph with an f-ratio of 2.8. I don't see a conflict in using a fast telescope and still trying to get the best resolution out of it, rather than the largest field of view, as we trend to sensors with smaller but more pixels and resolution-enhancing post-processing. To reach back focus, for my 2-inch electronic filter wheel, I'm using the ZWO tilt adapter and the ASCAR back focus adjuster. This particular scope is sensitive to one-tenth of a millimeter back focus settings. For my multicolor imaging workflow, I'm using the following filters. Hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, a dark blue broadband, and the near-infrared filter. This is the location of the target M16, the Eagle Nebula, which is about 20 to 30 degrees above the horizon, end of June, beginning of July. I'm imaging under Bottle 7 skies, so this is a little bit challenging. I'm using the ZW-AM5N strain wave mount. The total error of this mount is better than 0.5 arc seconds. So here's an overview of the imaging schedule. I start with the dark blue filter, followed by oxygen 3, hydrogen alpha, and finally near infrared. Imaging this whole sequence did not take longer than one hour. Let's look into the results I'm presenting stacked images, providing the number of subs and the exposure times. This is in dark blue with limited nebulosity. This is oxygen 3 with a strong nebulosity signal around the pillars of creation, hydrogen alpha. The near-infrared stack, very little nebulosity, but an abundance of high-contrast stars. 
just to give you an idea of the resolution, I'm providing a scale here for the pillars of creation taken in hydrogen alpha and near infrared. Now we get into the multicolor workflow and I'm combining this image together in a color model whereby hydrogen alpha is mapped into red, oxygen three into green and dark blue into blue. Now the question becomes, what do we do with the near infrared? So my solution to the problem is to map near infrared signal into the red and blue channel to produce a unique magenta color. When we look to the emission spectrum of stars, we will notice that the intensity of the short wavelengths and the long wavelengths are typically lower than the maxima. And that is due to the fact that stars are black body radiators. And that also means that magenta is not a star color to occur naturally. For that reason, it is a safe approach to use magenta to indicate near signals. The combination of hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and dark blue results into the following color image. In comparison, if I add the near infrared and do a deconvolution, I'm achieving this image. The near channel brings in multiple stars in the pillars of creation and in addition in many other areas of the nebula. Both the butter and optolung filters show halos around bright stars. This can be removed with appropriate image processing routines. Let's look to the final result. In conclusion, given currently available technology, there are now good opportunities to realize near infrared imaging. Near cuts through dust and less transparent light scattering matter in space and adds a new quality to your astro images. You will need to consider and plan how you want to integrate your near images into your workflow, specifically if you intend to produce color images. Low humidity, cold nights likely provide the most near transparency and contrast for achieving the best results. Thank you for watching. Warm skies.